everyone, and welcome to today's uh, CLEAR conversation series. Um, I'm really glad to introduce our today's speaker, Dr. Yen Tang from the School of Education. Um, Yen studied for her master's degree and for her PhD um, at Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand. She also worked as a lecturer um, in Vietnam at uh, Vietnam National University. Uh, Yen's main areas of research interest lie in corpus linguistics, English for academic purposes, English for specific purposes, and vocabulary studies is her, uh, one of her main areas of interest. Um, Yen has published widely in uh, uh, renowned journals, in peer-reviewed journals, high-ranking ones, um, and she has a number of publications um, in um, a range of journals, uh, such as TESOL Quarterly, uh, Journal of English for Specific Purposes, System, and some others. Today, Yen is going to share uh, the findings of some of her research, of some of her recent studies, um, and some of her older studies, which she conducted. And um, the main focus of today's presentation is on um, exploring the, the role of vocabulary in academic spoken English. Thank you, Dana, for that. And hi, everyone. So, so for today's presentation, I would like to share with you some of my findings uh, related to academic spoken vocabulary. So I also did uh, a study to measures um, with uh, 66 first years university students uh, in uh, an EAP program in Vietnam. And what I did is that um, at the beginning of the program, I asked the, the student to complete the updated vocabulary level test to measure their knowledge of the most frequent 5,000 words of general vocabulary. And uh, the result is presented um, in the table. So uh, you can see from the first row of the table that nearly 20% of the participants had mastered the most frequent 2,000 words of general vocabulary. So in the area of vocabulary, we consider the most frequent 2,000 words as high frequency words. It is the basic vocabulary knowledge that anyone should have before they uh, start learning academic vocabulary. But as you can see from my results, that just a very small percentage of the participants reach that goal. And if you look at the next two rows, you can see that a large number of them even had to master the most frequent 2,000 words or even the most frequent 1,000 words. So this was, this was quite worrying and surprising. But when I uh, did some further reading um, that also measured the vocabulary knowledge of EAP learners uh, in other contexts, and I found quite similar patterns. So they re reported that there are a reasonable number of uh, learners before they come and study at EAP program, they also have uh, insufficient knowledge of the most frequent 2,000 words of general vocabulary. So the corporate analysis, however, showed that to uh, achieve reasonable comprehensions of academic spoken English, learner would need to know the most frequent 4,000 words of general vocabulary. But when we measure the knowledge of these learners, we realize that uh, there's a number of learners who hadn't achieved that goal. So that helped me to understand why academic listening is so challenging for many uh, second language learners. But then the question then comes is at how we can help the student to narrow the gap in vocabularies between what they need to know and um, what they already know. So I also uh, look for resources out there to support students uh, with um, academic vocabularies, what resources to help them to deal with vocabulary in academic spoken English. And I felt um, there are a lot of resources to support uh, them with the vocabularies in academic written English, but not much with vocabularies in academic spoken English. So let me uh, take the number of academic word lists as an example. So you can see on the slide that there are long histories of creating academic written word lists, but 
when we think about academic spoken worldies, so by the time I did my study, um, there are only one worldies available and actually it's not available for public to use. So it's fair to say that there are no academic spoken worldies uh, that was available at that time. So the first step of the project is to uh, create what we call the first academic spoken corpus. This corpus will be used to develop the list. And the, the corpus has 13 million running words. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is the largest academic spoken corpus has been created. And it represents the transcript of lecture, seminar, lab, and tutorial recorded at different institutions in different parts of the world, for example, in the UK, US, uh, New Zealand, and Hong Kong. And um, you can see the structure of the corporate on the slide. So it have um, three, uh, it have four sub corpus, hard peel, hard applied, soft peel, and sub applied. And it's sub corporates have six subject area, and each subject area have um, around 500,000 words. And altogether, each uh, uh, subject, each uh, sub corporate have um, 3.25 million running words, and the corporate represent academic speed from 24 subject area. The reason we do for that is that you can see that the corporate is very balanced, and it represents a material from a range of subject areas, and uh, we hope that it can benefit students from different subject areas. So once the corpus has been created, the next step we do is to identify items for our word list. So to be selected for the word list, um, a word needs to occur in all four sub corpus and in at least 50 percentage of the subject areas and have a frequency of at least 26.9 times per million words and have dispersion of at least 0.6. Um, so the statistic measure we use here to ensure that the list can capture the most frequent and wide ranging words in the corpus so that it can benefit students from different subject areas in their study. So as a result, uh, we identify 1,741 a word that meet that criteria and include in the academic spoken word list. So once the word list has been developed, the next step is to validate that. And a common way to do that is to examine the lexical coverage of the list in the corpus uh, that it was um, represent academic spoken English uh, and the higher the lexical coverage, the better the word list is. So you can see on the slide the, um, the coverage of the list in the uh, academic spoken corpus from which it was developed. So if we look at the, the first bar, the red bar, this is the coverage of the list in the whole corpus and it represents 29.13% um, of the word in the corpus, uh, which is very good. And if you look at the uh, the green bar, it represents the coverage of the list in each of the disciplinary sub corpus. And you can see that it consistently cover around 90% of the words in the sub corpus. So that indicates that the list can benefit uh, students from uh, different disciplines um, so they can get fairly equal benefit from the list. We also look at the coverage of the list in three independent corpus. Um, so uh, if you look at the table, the, the last three row, you can see that this is, we also uh, create uh, a second academic spoken corpus, a non-academic spoken corpus, and an academic written corpus to validate the list. Uh, and the, the corpus have similar size as the first academic spoken corpus, the list from uh, the corpus from which the list was developed. Uh, and especially the second academic spoken corpus is a cap mirror, the first academic spoken corpus, so that we can ensure that there are valid um, validations. So here is the findings. Uh, again, if you look at the red bar, this is the coverage of the list in the corpus from which it was developed. And uh, the coverage, uh, the, the blue bar is the coverage of the list 
in the second academic spoon coverage. You can see that it consistently covered um, around 90 percentage of the words in academic spoken English. So that shows that they truly reflect the vocabularies in academic spoken English. And if we look at the, um, the yellow and also the purple bar, it represents the coverage of the list in first, the, the, the yellow bar is the non-academic spoken corpus and the purple bar is the uh, capri, uh, coverage of the list in the academic written corpus. And you see that it, the coverage is uh, lower. They indicate that the list better represent um, spoken vocabulary rather than uh, written vocabulary and academic vocabulary rather than non-academic vocabulary. So to sum up, um, so here are some key messages that I learned uh, about vocabulary in academic spoken English. So if second language learners need to understand academic spoken English, they need to know uh, 4,000 word family of general vocabulary. But that goal may be too challenging for many second language learners uh, because a lot of them fail to achieve that goal. And the academic spoken word list is a shortcut to help the student to enhance their comprehension. And it um, can benefit people from different disciplines and different vocabulary levels. And it's a very useful tool for uh, EAP program and also people who would like to do research in vocabularies and academic vocabularies. A very interesting presentation, Yan. I really enjoyed it and learned a lot. I was thinking because um, non-native speakers constitute a majority of learners around the world, mm -hmm. and I was just thinking how much how demanding this would be to reach that level of expectations, um, uh, four thousand words or even two thousand. And um, what what can school teachers do, or like something be done in programs? before um, students come into uh, higher education to prepare them for this expectation. Um, I don't know whether I understood that from your presentation, but I was thinking maybe you could clarify that. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for the question. So I think this is one of the, um, the key things that motivate me to do the academic uh, spoken word list. So like I mentioned in my presentation, so if we just uh, expect the student to uh, to deal with that themselves. So it's too challenging for them. But if we ask them to learn 1,000 word, 2,000 word, and so on, too many word for them to learn. But the academic spoken word list can help them to achieve that. It's a kind of shortcut they only have to study. Instead of having to study 4,000 word, they only have to study fewer than 2,000 word. And with that amount, number of words they can achieve that in a short period of time rather than 4,000 words.